before I commence, I'd just like to um, thank the network that's made today possible, um, Jody and Bonnie and Judy and everyone that's sort of spreading the word about land care and also just getting people together. Um, I remember Judy Henderson as she retired from the head of the CMA saying that really what she learnt over the years was it's all about a vision and it's all about people. So I think we put those things to together, we'll be right. I better get cracking because um, I think I'm going to get the whip on me otherwise. So. And before I commence, I would also just like to acknowledge the support of my team at Fig Trees Organic Farms, my employers, William and Erica Clinton, and my manager, Henry, at Gra manages the Grafton Farm. I'd also like to make a special mention of the driving force behind my research for the previous 18 years. My three sons, Ben, James and Andrew, have willingly given up their time with their father for a lot of, the, lot of those years. OK, seeing the world with new eyes. In 1988, the philosopher Thomas Berry explained, it's all a question of story. We are in trouble now because we do not have a good story. We are in between stories. The old story, the account of how we fit into it is no longer effective. Yet we have not learned the what new story. This is my contribution to the formation of that new story, a story where people fully understand their connection with the rest of the world. This is also the story of Fig Tree's organic farms and how we are trying to connect our farms into that new story. This is a story where we understand the need for a strong foundation. Fifteen years ago, while I was trying to understand how to address the problems of a degraded beef cattle operation, I came to the conclusion that unless we immediately start to unite and look after wider ecological processes in our regions and nation, then our efforts at an individual farm level will be negated by extreme events coming from challenges outside the areas in our care. At Fig Trees Organic Farms, we have come to understand that our services to the community go far beyond the production of healthy food. We respect the fact that we are both a contributor to and a recipient of healthy ecological services. In addition to managing our land with respect to these services, we also endeavour to communicate to the public the critical need for their respect of healthy land in order to support a healthy future. This is a story where we know what we want for the future. Decisions were driven on the basis of two questions. As a land manager and food supplier, what decisions and course of action did I need to follow to ensure a healthier, more sustainable farm operation? And as a father and member of the global community, what decisions could I make to contribute to a healthier, safer and more secure world? So I was coming at it from two angles, the personal angle, um, extended research and education, and also my role as a manager. I decided that what was needed was to adopt a far greater understanding of the role of ecosystem processes and communicate how we could help enhance these processes to deliver a more productive environment. And I guess that's what we've been learning a lot about the last two days. This is a story where we are not afraid to acknowledge potential threats. Through first-hand experience and education, I became very aware of the reality of serious challenges such as climate change and ongoing land and water degradation. Yenkin and Wilkinson in 2000 stated, the nature of the global climate system means that an increase in global temperature will bring about changes in global precipitation rates, sea level, fire frequency, snow cover, as well as atmospheric and ocean circulations. Thanks to the mining industry and the pathetic cover-up of governments, we no longer have to worry about climate change being a problem of the future. Denying climate change has not prevented the reality of it occurring. In fact, if there is one positive coming out of the recent climate extremes in Australia, it should be that the true reality of this threat has been confirmed. All of our energy can now be focused on combating this threat and designing a more intelligent path forward. A leading, a leading climate scientist recently commented, we either start taking immediate action or we should prepare for an unrecognisable planet. He thought waiting for 2020 to make the next round of UN talks was a bit too late. I agree. In addition to the extreme fires, heat waves, floods and storms, Australia has tragically once again lost billions of tonnes of precious soil and fresh water. If we are ever going to improve our outlook for the future, we must acknowledge that these new extremes of weather are a consequence of a society ignoring the essential role of ecosystems in maintaining a stable environment. For far too long, governments of all persuasions have made land use policies which deliberately, and I mean deliberately, disregard the natural foundations of a healthy nation. Foundations such as healthy soil with good humus levels, 
healthy plant communities, a stable climate, and an effective water cycle. They have been living in a make-believe well. Should we really expect land dispossessed of healthy soil and vegetation with millions of hectares covered in housing, ripped apart from mining or blanket sprayed with toxins, or poorly grazed for decades to go on providing us with a regular water cycle and protection from droughts and floods? I think not. This is a story where we respect all life, including people. The consequences of unrelenting development and climate change are everywhere. We have already lost 50% of the coral on the Great Barrier Reef in the past 28 years and not expecting the remainder to survive intact for much longer than another few decades. What a monumental tragedy. The one species on the planet capable of understanding how to protect the Earth is consciously destroying it. And despite the undeniable connection, explained very well by Derek, between food originating from healthy soil and optimum human health, governments are still failing to show any serious support for farming which restores organic and biologically healthy soil. It's time we put an end to the history of avoiding the truth. It's time we began to see with new eyes the true rea reality of the world we are responsible for. This is a story where we discover our true role in determining a healthy future. In this new story, it is time to reassess our role in providing health, in providing water, in caring for the climate, in protecting wildlife, in reducing the impacts of droughts and floods. We, are, we must acknowledge that true solutions will never come from artificial means or an attitude which disconnects society from nature. Our true role for regenerating healthy ecosystems and a healthy society is in our role as coordinators of natural processes to enhance soils, biology and plants and allow these true experts of water cycling, disease prevention, carbon sequestration, habitat construction and flood protection to perform to their full potential. Without doubt, the most important asset on a farm is the decision maker. This is a story where healthy farming is recognised as one of the most important professions on earth. Our holistic goal states, at Fig Trees Organic Farms, we aim to become a recognised supplier of high value, highly nutritious organic produce. And by ensuring that all decisions are made wisely, increases in productivity will be matched by increases in ecosystem services to the community. Underlying all of our efforts at Fig Trees Organic Farms for restoring the production of land and ecosystem processes has been a learning culture focused on the building of healthy soil with good humus levels. The presence of stable humus allows air, water and essential mineral nutrients to be held in aggregates. The, spongy, the spongier the soil, the more pores or open spaces are within it. Like Swiss cheese, reduced to an infinitesimal scale, each of these holes or pores has an inner surface that is coated with plasma. The greater the porosity of the soil, the more capacity it has to accumulate air, water and nutrients, as Jerry was just explaining. Consequently, we can imagine that a loss of this porosity with all its inner surface represents a catastrophe to the soil. My own studies, as Judy and Jerry have pointed out, um, came, came to the, um, the figures on, on water storing. So um, basically increasing your soil water by 4% can increase the water stored in the soil by 640,000 litres of water. Planned grazing and the use of holistic decision making has been our major method of increasing the levels of humus. It's been the most cost effective. Pastures and quality beef on our farms, leading also to an increase in biodiversity, water storage and drought protection. We dispute the viewpoint that all livestock are major contributors to climate change. My figures work at a 1 to 30 ratio in favour of looking after the climate. This is uh, some photos of the property at Billabong that I'm on now. The, soil, the photo on the left, obviously when we got there in a drought, um, no, no fencing in place or water systems and um, then a photo later on, I've installed three permaculture swales across the landscape. Um, this is an award we won in 2011 for natural resource management. Um, our, our boss on the left of me, Henry, just sort of keeping quiet at the back there. Um, it's sort of often people are looking for things that are very visible um, in the landscape, you know, like engineering works and really it's it's really grasses that are our greatest ally in all the challenges. Our marketing approach at Fig Trees Organic Farms has been to link consumers to healthy and healthy food to a healthy environment. We highlight, highlight the fact that ultimately the ones responsible for ensuring the care of the Australian landscape are consumers. Consumers are made aware that when they purchase our beef they are also making a decision to help regenerate a healthy nation. 
This is a story where we start seeing the world with new eyes. If we ever are going to build a strong nation for the future, then we must start paying respect to Australia's true foundations. By seeing the world with new eyes, we should all recognise that within a healthy land with humus soil and supportive vegetation, we have the greatest water storage, recharge and supply system ever designed, capable of storing and recycling over one million litres of water throughout every hectare. An absolutely critical buffer for reducing the impacts of droughts and floods. The greatest and only true centre for exceptional health, as Jerry has well pointed out, prevention against disease, a never-ending foundation of fertility, regional prosperity, one of the only true opportunities for restoring a stable and safe climate by removing CO2 from the atmosphere and returning the carbon back to the soil, and an opportunity to halt the record levels of species loss. This is a story where Australians, not mining companies, decide what we want for the future. In the interest of secure, a secure future, Australians must urgently demand a charter for the nation which clearly outlines what condition we expect Australian landscape to be like in 200 years or more. Insisting that any further development in Australia respects this charter and need to care for and enhance all land. We must recognise we are on a path heading in the wrong direction. We must begin to see the world with new eyes and to know when it is time to commence a new story. A story based on honesty and truth, on understanding our world and on a goal with a very defined future. This is not the end of the story, this is the beginning. Thank you.